Hey everyone, this is Seka. Welcome to the Broom Closet. Thanks for joining me. I hope you're enjoying some of the Sims play as much as I am enjoying making it. I really should be putting my energy into a little more active witchcraft chaos, but um, this is like taking over my life. I thought I'm going to try and work a little more authentically with the Practical Magic girls that I already had. I've already done a playthrough with the other Practical Magic characters and I was trying to remove some of the more modern things from their home to make it a little more authentic. And then I thought, oh, you haven't seen um, the progression of the aunts and you haven't really seen the girls grow up. You know, there was a little bit of that. And then I started to work backwards. Okay, it might be cool to see Jillian and Sally as youngsters or, um, you know, just growing up. And then I thought back farther because um, there is a prequel to Practical Magic called Rules of Magic. Alice often came out with, uh, I think, two years ago. And they're actually HBO Max, I think, has just picked it up as a show. They're going to make a show about Rules of Magic. But we don't uh, see that in the movie. We don't see the aunt's upbringing. So I was like, Oh, I could make them young because in Rules of Magic, um, it's in the 60s, it's really fun, they're teenagers, and then I thought even farther back. I said, I think I need to start at the beginning. So that's why I created Maria. But this took some time to try to figure out because I knew there was no way I could fit 300 years of Owen's lineage into a series on my YouTube. So I had to strategize a little bit. And what I'm going to end up doing is obviously I'm starting here with Maria and I'm going to kind of squish their timeline together um, because we just don't know any of the other characters, but we do know, um, we know the main girls, we know the aunts, and through Rules of Magic, we know the aunt's parents. I'm going to be changing the aunt's parents a little bit to make it a little more fun to play with and then we know Maria. So what you'll probably end up seeing is the Puritan era then we're going to go through the 40s, 50s with Stella, and then the 60s, 50s, 60s with the aunts, and so on and so forth. So we'll just get right into it. Let us meet Maria. It took a few tries to get her outfits right. I had to download quite a bit of custom content, and I actually linked this package file for those sim players in the last video description box, so go there if you want the Puritan clothing and the stuff I used around the house, like the outhouse and the water pump and things like that. Uh, I made Maria's uh, attributes. She is independent, she's a witch, and I think the last one is a quick learner. It's gonna be a little tricky melding these two plots together as far as the movie and the book. I tried to go more towards the book, but in the book she gets pregnant um, by, one, I think it's the judge, of the witch trials or one of the judges in the town and his name is John Hathorne and he doesn't want anything to do with her and or the baby and actually pays her a big chunk of money to like go away so in my mind I'm like how did they build this grand house and it's from that old money that she got paid um, to kind of disappear Another weird little thing that I'm going to have to just meld together and you just have to bear with me is the fact that she was granted this money from him and quote unquote built this house with 15 carpenters or whatever, but it's a Victorian style house. The timeline with that doesn't add up, but I'm going to have Maria and her daughter Stella move into the house that we know and love from the Practical Magic movie. So we'll just have to suspend our imaginations a little bit. So you might be able to see that I actually started Maria's cabin in the backyard of the Owens house and there was room to add it and then I thought, wait a second, this should be on its own plot. Don't see it in the movie, but the stills from the movie, you're able to see, see the house from the cabin. So it's adjacent, but it's not on the same plot. So what I ended up doing was basically just copying and pasting it onto the plot behind the Owens house. And this is on the Winberg Island. So one of the tricky things was how does one live in a Puritan era 
surrounded by modern amenities because in sims you have access to any and all technology with the magic of the internet so a few things i had to figure out how is she going to make money how is she going to feed herself and how was she going to have her personal needs like bathing and going to the bathroom because there's no indoor plumbing so in that aspect i kind of cheated a little bit there is a bathtub but she probably would have filled up the water from the outdoor uh, well or spring and brought it inside and I had a toilet inside and it was sectioned off by walls, but I found a really cool uh, CC for an outhouse. So she does have a toilet technically. The next thing was, how is she gonna make money? She would know as a Puritan woman how to do so many things that we take for granted now, like making clothes and making butter and like knowing how to scale a fish. So I figured um, she'd be doing gardening also. And with that garden, maybe she has some bees. So I just recently got the seasons add-on package for sims which i love i'm so glad i did it i waited i waited and waited to get seasons but it really made the game so much fun and i can do kind of like a year in the life of these characters so she is going to be uh, tending her garden a lot and fishing a lot and taking care of her bees uh, and selling their honey so with that being said, I thought feeding her was going to be the easy part. She could just eat right out of her garden. She could grow whatever she needed and just live off of that. But with seasons, there are only certain types of plants that will be fruitful during that season. So she was kind of screwed when winter came around. I added a cold cellar. There would be some type of hole in the ground where she could keep food cold and fresh. So down there, there is an old fashioned looking pantry that she can keep her ingredients in. She would have probably bought eggs. She would probably had flour and knew how to bake bread. And the fireplace that you see is a working stovetop. I don't believe it's an oven. And you're actually gonna see her cabinets change maybe two or three times because she would start cooking but not have anywhere to put it because the rustic cabinets that I had weren't working. So you'll see the cabinets change a few times. Eventually I found something that she can cook in the fireplace and uh, eventually she was able to eat her food. I feel like I kind of slapped together John. He was a means to an end and not a major, major role, but he's a natural leader. He's ambitious. Um, he's very articulate, but he's in it for the wealth and power. So you're going to see a bunch of different costume changes. And again, I had to go online and get some Puritan downloads and just kind of make do with some of the costumes from the different packs. I feel like she would have gone for this older man, but very attractive. He at first had kind of like a James May looking face from Top Gear. So I tried to give it a little more youth. Um, and this is how he turned out. And eventually we're going to see John Hawthorne pop into the picture. She actually met him at some kind of rave, which I find hilarious. So she was at this rave and I had her over the course of playing um, her story start. She flirts with a lot of the guys. So a lot of the guys, um, the adult to elderly, love her. <laughs> they just love her. So I thought that was pretty funny. But with John Hawthorne, I tried to do it the old school way and not use cheats and definitely have like a courtship happening between them. Through their courtship here in the game they actually genuinely liked each other and um, they didn't have a great deal of friendship involved but they really really were into each other somehow though and she's done this more than once because she has the witch trait she's turned him into a toad and the one time she turned him into a toad i was trying to film their interaction for the video that came prior to this but I couldn't figure out how to turn him back so the only way that I found out was to have another sim kiss him so uh, instead of using Maria and getting getting all these different attributes for their relationship I found just a, a townie and he ended up really liking this townie more than Maria Another cool thing Sims lets you do is to have pets if you decide you want that add-on. And our Owens women have their cats at the Owens house. But I thought Maria would be a little more rugged and wild with her choices. So I actually had a dream a couple nights before about, of all things, raccoons. So I decided to give her a raccoon as a pet. In the book, all the Owens women, ha they name their cats after birds. So the raccoon's name is Finch. 
And he's just the cutest dang thing you ever did see. And I think any loss of a relationship, because she's going through such a time of upheaval and the, the man she loved and the father of her unborn child does not want to be with her, she's going to need some kind of companionship. So I thought having Finch would help with that. I just loved using Seasons for this little series. It was so fun to see in the wintertime she could make snow angels and she could... Um, build snowmen and just the calm quiet darkness of the winter night was really really cool and she could be sitting by her fireplace reading a book in spring and summer it's so neat to see the huge thunderstorms that roll through and it has like random lightning strikes that cause your sim to run back into the house uh, and in the fall you get the leaves changing and the and the holiday spirit it's really fun and the seasons add-on lets you customize their calendar so you can add holidays or different events so i added uh, the sabbats i added just four because you'll do a week in each season i think there's seven days per season and i added yule i added like an astara spring festival then we have the beltane festival that she can enjoy bonfires and then we have Samhain, uh where she some of her things are to remember her ancestors and things like that and then eventually toward the end, we will meet Stella. And this is the creation of her in the create sim She's so stinking cute and adorable with her little chubby cheeks. As I mentioned, I am changing this character from the one in the book. The aunt's mother in the book was a bit uptight and she had a lot of issues with the magical side of the family. So I wanted to keep with the times and make Stella kind of like a little rebellious just like her mother and then that will lead us into her meeting her husband and having uh, Aunt Franny, Aunt Jet, and Vincent. I haven't really decided what kind of quote-unquote witch Stella is going to be because her mother is such like a, a Freya archetype so love and attraction and fertility um, so she, but she can also do it all so I think as the story progresses and these characters in the Sims progress we will see what kind of little witch Stella grows into everyone thanks for joining me I hope you liked this video and you will stick around for more I'm going to try to bust out some actual broom closet content and not just sims but until then guys thank you so much for joining me here in the broom closet have an awesome day